It's National Wheaties Week. Yes, it's National Wheaties Week, and Wheaties present Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. On stage tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another in the Wheaties big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. <laughs> Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Tonight's case, Fool's Gold. Shortly after 9 a.m. on the Tuesday after Labor Day, 1946, two men in a late model black sedan cruised slowly along the main street of the town of Live Oak in West Texas. All right. Let's go over it once more. We've been over it 20 times, Foy. Let's get it done. I ain't taking a chance on you making any mistakes. I ain't making mistakes. Think I want to go back to Huntsville again? Haven't done anything but case this bank since I got out of the pen a month ago. You sure there's no guard? No, I told you. A town like this. <laughs> Ain't got but two tellers in the cage. Got an alarm system, though. One of them moves for an alarm, start blasting. How are we gonna hide out afterwards? You leave that to me. We'll beat our way back to where I've been working. Roundup will be starting tomorrow. And I'll get the old man to take you on until things cool off. That's good. Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna suspect a poor working cow poke. Here we are. You keep me covered while I cash the check. Yeah. Good thing he never cashed a check like that before. Shut up. Howdy, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Cash this. Sure thing. What? Pass over five thousand dollars. Come on, and don't move funny or I'll blast you. They're robbers! They're robbers! You crazy old! Ah! Let's get out of here! We'll drop anybody who gets in the way. Come on, Commons, hurry! Get in! And they're pouring out of that place back there. They'll have to roll fast to get us. Look out! Car coming out of that side street. Let them look out! You're gonna hit! Poor child, there's a blood all over him. Look at that oh, oh, old baby. Oh, gotta get out. Gotta get away. Hey, driver of the sedan is alive. Oh, he's still alive. Look at that poor little boy. Your face is not bad, mister. You better get away from me. Get away from me. Look out, he's got a gun. Ah! Partner, it's National Wheaties Week. It's celebrating time, and I'll tell you why. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Think what that means. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Now, doesn't that say vitamins and minerals and energy, energy worth talking about? Sure, first thing in the morning, Wheaties and milk and fruit. Join me tomorrow. See how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. Texas Highway Patrol threw a guard around the wrecked cars and notified the Texas Rangers of the attempted bank holdup and the fatal crash. 
Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to the case. Howdy, Jace. Glad to see you. Howdy, Rhodes. Pretty bad. Who got here first? I did. I was patrolling near Landmar when the call came through. Which one was the bandit car? It's a black sedan. Who was in the coupe? Man and his kid. They took away. He didn't miss anything by not seeing it, Jase. Where are the bodies? The doctor had him taken to the hospital basement. How about the bank teller? He's alive, but he's unconscious. Deputy sheriff's with him. One of the stick-up men got killed in the crash, you know. Yeah. Been able to find the driver? No, no not yet. Cut down that street and into the hills, according to witnesses. The sheriff has the dogs and posse after him. Who owns the sedan? Don't know yet, Jace. We're checking on it. Let's have a look at it. Okay. Hmm. Blood on both sides. Steering wheel, too. Means the driver must have been cut on his head or his hand. Had a gash in his scalp. Yeah. Hit the windshield on this side. And a couple of hairs stuck to the jagged edge. A dark brown. Yeah. Druggist got a good look at him. Saw the whole thing from his store. Came out to help and almost got shot. Is he around? Uh, yeah, he's right over there. KTX, uh, Mr. Reber. Yeah? A ranger wants to talk to you. Uh, let him through, will you, boys? Yes, yeah, sir. Did you see the man who was driving the sedan? Yeah, saw him up close. A uh, call coming in on our car radios, Jay, so excuse me. Sure, Rhodes. What did he look like? Uh, six feet, maybe. Built solid. Boots, jeans, and work shirt. Of course, that could fit a thousand men, but this one had a couple of gold teeth right in the middle of his mouth. Gold teeth, huh? Anything else? No, nope, except for a bad cut on his head. Bad enough to need stitching? Sure was. Uh, got a flash on the sedan, Chase. It was stolen during the night or early this morning over in Rankin. I thought so. We better get over to the hospital. I'll call headquarters and have a lab man sent down to go over the car for fingerprints. Not easy to lift him from that car. Get pretty smeared with all the blood around. Yeah. And even if you do get him, you still got to find the man that goes with him. Here's a body, gentlemen. Lift the sheet if you want. Anything on him, Doctor? Nothing at all. Not even a mark that might identify him. Don't want to see the father and the child, do you? No, that wouldn't help. Rhodes, we can fingerprint this one. Might help us find his pal that way. Yeah. You can do me a favor, Doc. Sure. The killer who got away cut himself on this glass. Before I send it to Austin, I'd like to get his blood type from it. Can you do it now? Sure. Go upstairs to the lab in 15 minutes. Have it for you by then. Thanks. That blood type will give you something to go on, Jace. I hope we don't need it. I wish there was some word from the sheriff's posse. If they had him, I'm afraid we'd have heard by now. Yeah. I might as well walk over at the sheriff's office while we're waiting for the doc. Mm. We can go through the next room and up the front stairs. Okay. Uh, that's the kid's mother. Did you come to see my boy and my husband? Did you know him? No, ma'am, I, I didn't. Uh, maybe you ought to go home for a while, ma'am. Why should I go home? There's nobody there now. He wanted his daddy to be the one to take him to school. He was just being registered. First day. Take it easy, ma'am. We were so proud of him. All last night he slept with his little red pencil box in his hand. I just bought it for him Saturday. Never even learned to write his name. <laughs> Nothing we can do to help her, Chase. Not here. No. Could be my wife and kid, or yours. Yeah. Any more on the bank teller? A uh, deputy reported he's still unconscious. We can look in the room when we get back to the hospital after. Hey, look. It's part of the sheriff's posse. Hey, you find him? Who? Who? No. Followed a blood trail cross country, but it made the river. We lost him. No chance of getting him now.
fingerprint crew from the lab flew in and went to work on the car in the hands of the dead bandit. Highway patrolman Rhodes waited for the report while I went back to the, see the doctor at the hospital. Got it yet, Doc? Uh-huh. Just finished. Blood types AB. AB, huh? I don't come across that very often. No, it's very rare. About one in... Oh, excuse me, Ranger. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, I'll be right in. What? VA is here now. I'll tell him. Goodbye. That was the deputy from the bank teller's room. The teller had just died. Unconscious all the way? Nope, came to for just a second before he passed on. Did he say anything? Nothing you don't already know, Ranger. The man who shot him had gold teeth. It was night before the fingerprint crew found anything. I unloaded my horse charcoal from the car trailer and was watering and feeding him at a livery stable when highway patrolman Rhodes brought over the reports. Come on, boy. Come on. Well, Chase, we know who the dead one is. Let's see. John Cummins served four years Huntsville armed robbery. No family, no known associates since leaving penitentiary. That's no help for finding the other one. No, could have known him before he went to prison or after. Anything on the car? Uh, yeah, here. Hmm. Lots of prints, but no clear ones. Except a full thumb impression on the cap of the gas tank. I haven't got anything on that print yet, though. Whoever it is, he has no record in Texas. He will have. B.I. may have something on him. I'm not going to wait around here, though. I don't like it either. But which way can you go? Both ways. Car was stolen in Rankin. That's west. I'll head back that way. You take the highway east. You got a plan? Something will keep us busy while we're waiting for a report on that thumbprint. Check every doctor along the way and see if any of them have stitched a head wound for a man with gold teeth. For a good part of the night and half the next day, I covered the towns and the back roads between towns. Country doctors and emergency hospitals. But none of them had seen the man I was after. Then finally, KTXI in San Angelo came through. KTXI calling Unit 10. KTXI calling Unit 10. Unit 10 to KTXI. Go ahead, KTXI. Have report for Unit 10 on thumbprint found on gas cap of stolen car. Subject known as Robert Trummer. Believed to be in or near Santa Rita. Maybe working there. Occupation, automobile mechanic... Unit 10 presently located Regan County, 40 miles from Santa Rita. We'll continue investigation. Unit 10, 10 4. It was almost sundown when I reached Santa Rita. But Robert Trummer wasn't hard to locate. The local constable told me where I could find him a service station about a mile out in the highway. I drove out there. Howdy, Ranger. Howdy. Your name, Tromer? Yeah. You can turn off that water and dry off your hands. Where were you yesterday morning at 9 o'clock? Uh, I was right here working. Why? You sure you weren't in the drover's bank at Live Oak? Of course I wasn't. Wasn't, huh? Move over here under the light. All right, now smile. What? I said smile. Say you weren't at Live Oak yesterday morning, huh? You heard me. Those gold teeth say you were. Look, Ranger, I... I the I, bank I... teller's dead, Trummer. So is a five-year-old kid and his father. And your pal, Commons. I don't know what you're talking about, Ranger. Try remembering, Trummer. You got a cut on your head. Take your hat off and let's have a look at that. Sure, I'll take my hat off. Well, you're looking, Ranger. You see any cut? No. No, Tromer, I... I don't see any cut. So if the guy you're looking for has a cut on his head, Ranger, it ain't me. Happy National Wheaties Week, everybody. From the Wheaties people, from me, and right now from the man stepping up to our microphone from backstage, the hard-working director of Tales of the Texas Rangers, Mr. Stacy Keach. Well, how's it seem, Stacy? Gosh, Frank, this doesn't seem like work. Now, imagine getting paid for this. 
It seems like fun to be able to get up here and talk about Wheaties. Well, it is fun, you know, and particularly on National Wheaties Week. It certainly is. And folks, backstage, we're celebrating just like we hope you are. Nothing dramatic, you know, just Wheaties with milk and fruit first thing in the morning. An all-star cast if I ever saw one. Try Wheaties yourself, so we'll know you're listening. They're great. Sure are, Stacy. And thanks for talking for us on National Wheaties Week. I took Tromer with me and drove back to Live Oak. There was no cut on his head, but he fitted everything else. His print matched the one on the gas cap. I stopped at the hospital, and Tromer consented to have his blood type taken. When the doc gets through testing that, he'll only tell you what I told you before. My blood type is O. Come in. Come in. You sent for me, Ranger? Yeah, Mr. Raver. You ever see this man before? Hmm. He looks like the fella. Why, you... Hold it, hold it. Now sit down. Well, Mr. Raber, is he or isn't he? I've seen him before. Where? Was he the man who climbed out of that wreck? Look, mister, maybe you did see me before. I run a gas station 30 miles down the highway. You might have seen me there. But you didn't see me here yesterday. How about it, Mr. Raber? Ranger, I'm not sure. After all, a fellow that got out of the car had a gun in his hand and blood all over his face. All I remember is them gold teeth. I ain't the only man in the world with gold teeth. You may be telling the truth, Ranger. You're after a blood type AB. This man's blood is pretty common. Type O, like he said. The case against Tromer was falling apart in my hands. I only had one thing left, his fingerprint, tying him with the stolen sedan. I took him over to the local garage. Recognize this car, Tromer? Your thumbprint was right on this tank cap. So I guessed the car up at the station, maybe. That's how my thumb... Hey, let me see that cap. Well... I sold a tank cap like this yesterday morning. Had to pry his old cap off with a chisel. Look, here you can see the marks. Car wasn't hit on this side. Keep talking. Well, this guy came in for gas early, 6 a.m. I was just opening up. His tank cap was the kind of locks, and he didn't have the key. Said he lost his key. Even had to jump the switch to get the car started. Here, see why wires are jumped on this one. I know that. That's how it was stolen. Didn't you think of that when he didn't have the keys? Oh, Ranger, it happens all the time. People are always losing keys. I've done it myself. Oh, I should have known there was something fishy about that guy. Why? Oh, because he didn't have any money to pay for the gas. Didn't tell me till I'd filled it up, either. Why'd you let him leave? He took ten gallons in the gas cap. Bill came to, uh, two... two ninety-three. Left me a hunting knife and a sheet for security. Worth maybe eight or nine bucks. Did he come back for it? No, I got it locked in my tool chest back at the station. Would you know the man if you saw him again? I think so, but it's just getting daylight. And, well, one customer's face looks like another, but I'd remember him. He have gold teeth like you? Uh, that's something I can't tell you. He was chewing a cut of tobacco and talking through it. Come on, I'll drive you back to your station and have a look at that knife. Chase, saw your car outside. Hi there, Rhodes. I checked a lot of doctors on the East Highway. None of them did the kind of stitch job we're looking for. I may have a lead. Get in your car and tag after me. Here's the knife, just like you left it. Fresh honed and clean as a whistle. No prints on that blade. Rhodes, take a look at this sheath. Design burned in the leather. Yeah. They engrave them pretty fancy sometimes. This isn't an electric engraving job. It's not good enough. Owner burned this in himself. Probably used a hot wire. Uh, that drawing looks like a buffalo head, Jace. But it isn't. No. Smaller drawings around it look like trees, like some scene he was burning out while yeah. he... Yeah. Yeah, Jace, it's something like that you see way off from the highway. State 23, west of Rankin. That's it, Rhodes. Buffalo Mesa. Let's get up that way and see if we can find a doc who stitched a head cut. It was mid-morning when we reached the area. There were three doctors in a 20-mile radius. The first one had nothing for us, but the second one... 
Yes, I stitched a head wound like that day four yesterday. Cowpoke, uh, Joe Foy, fell off his horse. Matter of fact, he was in here this morning, about three hours ago, to have the dressing changed. If you put on a fresh dressing, the one you changed is in that trash container, isn't it, Doc? Why, yes. Any blood on it? Of course. Cut was deep. Hasn't healed yet. Can you get that dressing out and check it for blood type? Well, it'll take a few minutes. I waited a couple of days for this, Doc. I can wait a few more minutes. Hey, y'all, Ranger. Unusual classification, type AB. That's it, Chase. Yeah. You know where this Joe Foy works, Doc? Why, Ben Kinney's place. Left at the crossroads and six miles out. Right near Buffalo Mason. Thanks, Doc. Come on, Rhodes. Right. Oh, Doc. Yeah? Boy has a couple of gold teeth, doesn't he? Gold teeth? Why, no, Rangy, he doesn't have gold teeth. I found one man with gold teeth, and he wasn't the right man. Now I had another one to go after, but he didn't have gold teeth. Rhodes and I drove out to the Kinney Ranch. The only one around was an old woman. I am only the cook here. Mr. Kinney and the men who works for him are out on the roundup. Where does Foy bunk? Just over there in the barn. There's a small room. You want to show us? Come with me. This is bunk? Yeah. Hey, Jace, look. Carved in the edge of the bunk. Yeah, Buffalo Mesa. That looks just like the one on the sheet. Better have a look through this footlocker. Likely he'd have his gun with him, isn't it, Chase? Just making sure. Hey. What is it? Oh, carton of chew on the back of Hey, that fits. Fellow at the service station said our man was chewing when he stopped there. Yeah, and I've seen this brand of chew before. If my memory isn't lying, there's something else that fits. Uh, you shouldn't tell Mr. Foy's thing. I just want to see one of these plugs. Here's the answer, Rhodes. Yeah. The plugs are wrapped in gold foil. Yeah. If I tear off a square of the foil and put it over my front teeth like this, I look like I have gold teeth. And every witness who saw Foy was throwing us off the trail instead of helping. I wonder how he thought of it. Probably got the idea on his way to Live Oak when he saw Trummer at the gas station. I'm going to take charcoal out of the trailer and ride out to the range. I'll get a horse from the corral and... Oh, thanks, Rhodes. But you better stick here. If Foy spots me coming, he might make a run for the ranch and grab a car or a pickup truck. You stay here and see that he doesn't get to him. You Joe Foy? No, I'm Kinney, Ranger. Foy in some kind of trouble? I'd call murder plenty of trouble. Murder? Yeah. Where is he? Down the row here, surrounded up strays. Glad to show you. All right, let's go. You know where Foy was Monday? Took the day off to fix his gear up and get ready for the roundup. You see him during the day? Nope. Went over to his bunk that night, though, to see why he didn't show for supper. Had a cut on his head. Said he fell. Doc had him patched up. Yeah, I know about that. Hey, there he comes now, around the mesa. Man, he spotted us. He's turning back for cover. Get up, careful! Get up! Yeah, turn behind here. Oh! Oh, oh, oh boy! Ranger, oh. you're hit. Yeah. I got to get him. Oh. You hit him, but he's up. He's running for the river. I got to get him. Come here, Charco. Come here, boy. Left shoulder looks mighty bad, Ranger. You can't chase him like that. I hit him. Come here, boy. <coughs> if he can move with a bullet in him, so can I. Get up, Charco. foot. Watch the banks for tracks in case he came out. River winds and bends. Can't see far ahead with the willers hanging over it. I'll see him when I get to him. 
I'm going to bring you in, boy. Next slug will kill you, Ranger. You better kill me, boy. Or you'll never leave another dead kid in the street. You ain't far ahead, Ranger. Not as far as he'd like to be. You hear him move? Yeah. Stop. Listen. He ain't waiting anymore. He stepped out of the streamer. Or he's waiting in ambush. You better stay behind me, Kenny. I moved forward slow, watching the bank for tracks and watching the willow clumps where he might hide. Not far ahead, several of the willows overhung the stream and dipped clear down to the water. Leaves floated downstream from it, and on one of them was a clear red blood spot. Look out, Ranger! Come on! Don't look like he's going to need the electric chair, Ranger. No. Not anymore, I... Oh, whoa, whoa! Here, let me help you. You gotta get to a doctor. Yeah, I... I guess you're right. I sort of forgot I was hit. Uh, thinking about what he did to a few other people. The body of Joseph Foy was definitely identified as that of the killer and hit and run driver. A ballistic check showed that his gun was the weapon used in the murder of the bank clerk. Ranger Jace Pearson was taken to the nearest hospital where, after a blood transfusion, he was pronounced out of danger. Are you with us out there? Are you celebrating? Well, it's National Wheaties Week, you know. And here's our star, Mr. Joel McRae, following up another great performance tonight with a few words meant for you personally. Joel? I'm enjoying being a Texas Ranger, and I hope you're enjoying it, too. As a matter of fact, I sincerely hope you've enjoyed it enough to go out and buy a box of Wheaties on Monday. If you do, that's the way we'll know. Your purchase of one box of Wheaties. Will you do that? I think you'll like them. Good night. Thank you, Joel McRae. And how was that for a sporting proposition, folks? If you like our show, there's a way to let us know. Just see your grocer about those Wheaties tomorrow. Remember, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. And goodness knows how many flakes there are in a box. Yes, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. And you know the value of whole wheat. Necessary vitamins, minerals, too and whole wheat energy worth talking about. Go ahead. Have Wheaties to start breakfast tomorrow. Wheaties with milk and the fruit you like. Breakfast of champions? Well, I should say so. Try them and see how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. Come on, it's National Wheaties Week. Come on, everybody, to the Wheaties party. Eat a lot of Wheaties like the champions do. Dance together cheek to cheek. This is National Wheaties Week. Eat a lot of Wheaties like the champions do. Wheaties, a breakfast of champions. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae will soon be seen in the Universal International Technicolor production, Saddle Tramp. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Hi Aberback, Paul Fries, Herb Butterfield, Dave Ellis, and Lillian Byatt. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcock, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. And this is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to listen on Wednesday night to Brian Donlevy and Dangerous Assignment on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. This is Joel McRae. A small boy is hungry in Italy tonight. You can feed him, comfort him, make him believe again with a package from CARE. No profit to CARE, just food for hungry kids. 550 does it to CARE, New York. CARE, New York, 550. Will you do it? Listen for Dennis Day and Judy Canova returning October 7th on NBC. NBC.